Hello and welcome to the second video in the module where we are talking about innovation. As I have promised to you, in this video we are going to talk about innovation dilemmas. What is this? Well, essentially, if you are a company and you have decided to uh, make some innovation happen, it is not a straightforward process. There are certain ways and alternatives. How can you do the innovation? And we are going to discuss four dilemmas. These are technology push or market pull, product or process innovation, open or closed innovation, technological or business model innovation. So, if you are an innovator, you will have to answer for yourself each one of these dilemmas. Which alternative are you going for? So, let's go straight ahead into the first one and we discuss technology push versus market pull. As always, I bring you a nice definition. So, for the technology push, research and development laboratories produce new products, processes or services and hand them over to the rest of the organization to manufacture, market or distribute. On the other hand, the market pool definition. Market pool reflects a view of innovation that goes beyond invention and sees importance of actual use. I think you already see that these are the two extremes that company can follow. Either you do the technology push so that you primarily listen to your scientists, to your research and development department. The other extreme is the market pool. Here you primarily listen to the users or your customers. And well, let's think about this. Which one of these is better? Well, none of them. Both of them have their pros and cons. On one hand, um, there are a lot of companies that rely on their scientists and research and development so that if technology occurs, now the marketing department is going to think about the use cases of this technology and then try to market it to users. Now, this company might be considered a technological leader and appreciated by the world. On the other hand, there are a lot of companies that have listened primarily to the scientists, but on the other hand ended up with a technology that had no actual use. And maybe they ended up with a patent that was then adopted 5 or 10 years later and this technology was used, but the company that invented it was already bankrupt. So <laughs> it's a tricky situation. The technology push has its pros and cons, certainly. Now if you would like to listen to your users, which users should you listen to? It certainly should be your power users or heavy users of your product because they will try to think about ways how to utilize your product to make them even better. There are uh, pharmaceutical companies that listen to top surgeons because these top surgeons oftentimes adapt the medical equipment so that it fits them better. Now the company then comes to this top surgeon and says, hey, you did a great job with utilizing of our equipment. Would you like to make it into product? We will give you a share from the sales. <laughs> so you see, this might be a better approach. On the other hand, it also has some disadvantages. If we listen to our users too much, we might lose our profile in a way. We um, might be just listening to the group of customers while these customers are not really telling us what they want because they have not seen it yet. This is what Steve Jobs was oftentimes saying when they asked him, hey, why are you pushing to the users this feature or, or this characteristic about your product? There is no one who said that they would appreciate it. And he said that, well, they just don't know what they want because they have not seen it yet. So listening to your users only might also not be the wisest strategy. You might deliver them technology, you might deliver them the features that they have not seen yet, so they cannot appreciate it and advise you to do them. So that was the technology push or market pull. Second dilemma that we have is product or process innovation. Let's go for the definition. Product innovation relates to the final product to be sold, especially with regard to its features. Process innovation relates to the way in which this product is produced and distributed, especially with regard to the improvements in cost or reliability. I think um, this definition describes it nicely. There are companies which are primarily focusing on product innovation. In my mind, Apple is a great example. They try to think about their products so that these products are as great as possible to the users and try to innovate the products themselves. 
On the other hand, there are companies which are focusing on process innovation. These are usually kind of generalists who are trying to serve a wider audience. So for instance, a Dell. Dell is a company that is well known for process innovation. They try to innovate the ways how they produce the products, how these products are sold and so on and so on. So then maybe costs are saved, the products are shipped faster and the products are delivered to the customer so that he is more happy. You see, this is a clear distinction between product and process innovation. Of course, you cannot be only a company that innovates only your products or only your processes. You always have to have something from the both sides. So these are not two unique worlds. Now, let's look at one drawing. On this picture, we have a representation of how markets mature. Thus, on the horizontal axis, we have time, and on the vertical axis, we have innovation rate. So, the higher we are, the higher is our pace of innovation. Now, inside of this plot, we have two curves. Blue one represents product innovation, and the red one process innovation. As you can see, according to this depiction, Product innovation comes first, and once dominant design is established, process innovation starts to emerge, while product innovation declines. Why does this happen? Why is there some dominant design established, and then the product innovation switches to process innovation? Can we see this in the real world? Of course we can, and there are a lot of examples. Think, for instance, about automobile industry. In the earlier 20th century, when there was Henry Ford thinking about uh, his car, if I'm correct, it was his Model T that was considered a dominant design establishment in the automobile industry. Before that, there were innovators thinking, hmm, should cars have three wheels or four wheels? Should they be powered by petrol or by steam or even by horses? What should they be powered by? Now, Henry Ford and his Model T established this dominant design, and since then, the innovation was more or less switching to the process innovation. Of course, when it comes to the product, the car itself, there has been a ton of innovation done on this field, but it can be considered that at that point, a dominant design was established. Think about cell phones. If I remember it correctly, it was in 2006 when Steve Jobs introduced his iPhone. Since then, we can see that this was the dominant design. Nowadays, all of the smartphones are following this direction that was established back then, and a lot of companies rather switch for a process innovation, rather than trying to figure out something completely new outside of this dominant design that was established. So, this is the product versus process innovation. Third dilemma is open or closed innovation. Uh, previously, when we had the two dilemmas before, these were kind of not unique worlds. They overlap. You need to have something from the both sides of the dilemma. You need to innovate both on the uh, product side and the process side. You need to have something from the technological push and the uh, market pool as well. Now, we come to the third dilemma, which usually is very distinct. You either go for the open innovation or closed innovation. I see many companies such as this. Let's go for the definition. Open innovation involves deliberate import and export of knowledge by an organization in order to accelerate and enhance innovation. I think what, what comes to your mind as first is an open source. There are many projects which are open source so that anyone can see all of, maybe if it's a software, anyone can see all of the code that has been done on this piece of software, anyone can use it, can try to replicate it, enhance it, contribute to this code. So this is a clear example of open innovation. Thanks to that, everyone can contribute to the code and maybe use it for free, then this kind of innovation should push things forward. On the other extreme, there are companies which are very secretive about what they do. Apple, again, is very well known for this. There are projects which are running for two to three years and only up to 100 people know what's going on. Just then, after this time, this innovation is revealed to the world. This is done with the purpose of having sort of being ahead of your competition so that when you announce the innovation to the world and you are ready to ship it to the world, then your competitors will have to 
catch up with you and it will take them maybe one year or two years so you will have this two-year window when you will be only one in the world offering this innovation that was a closed innovation for you you kept it as a secret i think this is a quite clear point so let's go for the fourth dilemma the fourth dilemma is technological or business model innovation we have a definition here business model describes how an organization manages incomes and costs through the structural arrangement of its activities well, all of a sudden we see what I described to you in the beginning of this video. Innovation is not only about a technology. We don't have to produce a new piece of technology if we would like to be innovative. We can also innovate our business model. Great example here is Ryanair. Ryanair is offering flights as every other airline company out there. But in the past they have been innovating a lot when it comes to their business model. So they have been pushing heavily on the direct sales via the internet. If you remember the days before, um, well, it was not Ryanair who figured out the internet sales of a flight ticket, that not, that's not what I'm saying, but they have been promoting this kind of um, touch with the customer a lot. So if you cut away the intermediaries, you can save the costs, you can increase your margin, or you can decrease the price of your product, you can do a lot in here. As well they are using secondary airports if you come to maybe any larger European city there are usually two airports there is a primary airport which is pretty expensive for the airlines to operate from and then there is a secondary airport which is maybe 60 kilometers away from the city or even 100 kilometers away from the city it's still called as a city airport but it's quite far away and that airport is going to be much cheaper for the airlines to operate because the fees are going to be lower. This was another business strategy innovation that Ryanair followed. Well, our customers will, will not mind if they arrive 60 kilometers away from the city because we are going to offer the flight for so cheap that they will still be happy. So you see, we don't only have to innovate on the technological side, we can also innovate on the business model. How do we do things? And that is all for me. That was four innovation dilemmas that we have to solve if we would like to innovate something within our organization. I'm looking forward to see you in the next videos.